Back up. Pickford stops it. With a penalty, an entire football game comes down to two people. 11 against 11 becomes one on one. Penalty taker versus keeper. Back in the Wild West, we had the duel. In the modern world, we've got the penalty. I am the tiger, the ball is the prey. That's how I used to motivate myself. It takes just over two seconds from the run-up to the ball hitting the net, or not. Two seconds in which a game can be decided. A final. An entire World Cup. That's the one chance the goalkeeper has to do something that is absolutely decisive in the game. So if penalties are that important, and when heroes can be born and careers can be destroyed, you should learn how to save a penalty. There are many theories about little hints telling the keeper what the taker is going to do. One of them says that in the moment of the shot, the tip of the boot of the standing leg indicates the direction of the shot. And indeed, that's scientifically and statistically proven. But there's no time to see that or react. By the time you have seen it, the shot's already on its way. So if the ball is already moving, the keeper barely has a chance to save the ball. So, if you want to save a penalty, it's not a question of reaction. There must be something else. What else? The 1982 World Cup saw the first penalty shootout in the tournament's history. The semi-final between West Germany and France. Toni Schumacher saved two, ensuring West Germany progressed to the final. In total, Schumacher parried four penalties at World Cups. No keeper has ever saved more. How did he do it? First, you have to do your homework. I once said I'd invented the database. Back in my early playing days, I'd ask my friends to look out for shootouts and note down the name of the club, the name of the shooter, which foot he used and how he shot. Low, medium, high, or high. And I'd enter that information in my notebook. Big data was already the keyword. So let's take a closer look at the stats, maths, and physics. With a penalty, the speed of the ball is between 60 and 120 kilometers per hour. If the taker shoots at, let's say, 90 kilometers per hour and the distance to the goal is 11 meters, we need the distance divided by the speed. 11 meters divided by 90 kilometers per hour is 25 meters per second. So it lasts 0.44 seconds. The blink of an eye. Of course, if you shoot in the corner, the distance is a bit bigger, so you can add 0.02 seconds. Human reaction time is between 0.1 and 0.15 seconds. Plus, there's the mass of your own body that you have to move. Which means it is nearly impossible to save a penalty if you just focus on the ball. The more you think about penalties, the more mysterious it gets. There are so many parameters you have to keep in mind. Want to have an example? FIFA says that the grass during a World Cup has to be 2.8 centimeters high. There are around 1,000 blades of grass growing on the penalty spot. The problem is they are growing in different directions. And the problem gets worse. After 90 or 120 minutes, the box is messed up six times worse than the rest of the pitch. Believe me, there was a study of the University of Hohenheim. If the grass is disturbed too much, the ball will lie too low. And even more importantly, the standing foot of the taker can slip at the decisive moment. I don't know if Augsburg keeper Marvin Hitz knew that. In December 2015, during an away game in Cologne, he trampled the grass on and around the penalty spot with his boots. The taker slipped and missed the penalty. By the way, the penalty was wrongly awarded, but Augsburg won the game 1-0 and Cologne sent an invoice of 122 euros and 92 cents to Marvin Hitz for the spoiled spot. A pretty good deal, I'd say. Okay, the pitch can play a role, but what else?
if the taker is ready, we are entering the world of psychology. We should be encouraged by the words of Manuel Neuer, one of the best keepers in the history of football. What does he think about penalties? I love it in the game because normally a goalkeeper only can win because he has the pressures on the striker and you can be a hero. <laughs> and even the best players can fail from the spot. In sport science it's called choking under pressure. The pressure on the taker is so huge that he's starting to overthink things. Their movements, which are normally totally subconscious, are suddenly made consciously. That's why even the best players miss penalties. They are thinking too much. You could call it paralysis through analysis. Jonathan Wilson has written a book about goalkeepers. He knows all about this phenomenon. Is he going to go left? Is he going to go right? The goalkeeper's trying to guess which way. And he might know that, that taker. He might know that the last seven penalties he's taken have gone to his left. So is he going to go to his left again? Or is he going to bluff and go to his right? Or is he going to double bluff and pretend to go to the right and then go to the left? Does he know that you know? Do you know that he knows that you know? That means welcome to the eternal spiral of psycho tricks. I pointed towards the corner where the stats said he always shot. So then he had the problem. Does Schumacher know that? Will he dive that way? I did try to put him under a bit of pressure. So how you increase mental pressure? In 2006, Germany keeper Jens Lehmann came up with an amazing psychological trick during the penalty shootout in the quarterfinal against Argentina. He was given a crib sheet from his coach with the preferences of some of the Argentinian penalty takers. The first couple of penalties, he, he happened to guess right. They weren't even on the list. But because he was looking at this list and then guessing right, the other Argentinian penalty takers were thinking, he knows what we're going to do. Yeah, he's, he's got on this piece of paper, yeah, there, there's every detail of what we're about to do. And that increases the pressure on them because they're not just thinking, how do I score this penalty? They're trying to second guess what Lima's going to do based on the piece of paper. Esteban Cambiasso was to take the decisive penalty and the psychological impact was devastating. Just imagine standing on the penalty spot and the keeper has a piece of paper and is looking at you. What does he know about me? Does he know what I will do even before I know? Lehmann saved. Germany were in the semi-finals and the famous piece of paper is now in the Museum of German History. What else can you do to save a penalty? It's always good to increase the time pressure. Statistically, when the taker bids his time for two or three seconds before he starts running, he scores with a probability of 78%. If he only waits one second, the rate decreases to 59%. So, takers put under time pressure miss more often. But there is one more trick for keepers when poised on the front edge of the line with your torso bent forward to be as close as possible to the taker, when you bend your knee slightly so you can dive more easily. The most important thing, the big trick, the big secret of Harald Schumacher, the best World Cup penalty saver of all time. There's always a crucial moment in the whole event when the taker puts the ball on the spot and then stands up straight again. It's the moment when he takes a brief look at which corner he wants to aim for. And if it was his strong corner, I would back that up by standing slightly towards the other side so that his corner looked bigger. I encouraged him to take his strong corner. So you offer him his favorite side and the trap snaps shut. So don't be afraid of penalties. As a keeper, the chances of embarrassing yourself is much smaller than for the taker. I love the one-on-one. -on -one. It's clear who has which role. Look forward to this moment and the taker will feel your confidence and will be afraid. 
Just remember, you could be the winner at the last big duel that still exists in the history of humankind. Back up. Pickford stops it.